<laughs> Good day, thinkers, thought leaders, progressives, and dreamers. I'm Craig the Writer Stewart. And I'm Derek J. And this is our panel conversation about ageism. Why you touch my shoulder? Well, I know I'm older than you. Okay, thank you. But you know, I've been I've been so looking forward to this conversation because when we sat down to come up with all of these topics, we were we were again, I say this every week, we were looking for ways to bridge the community. And there's a there's a gap. There's a there's a gap between ages. Mm-hmm. Um, and you had said something one day about there's a gap in terms of there's that there's that there's that age group. Okay, I just want to make sure you've gone. With okay, go ahead. You like, to, you like to say a lot of things that I say that don't need to be repeated. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, but yeah, I feel like um, in the black gay community. And this doesn't mean that it doesn't happen in the white community or other communities, but we're specifically we're talking, talking about, about yeah, we're talking about the black LGBTQ, LGBTQ and the rest of the letters that's new plus plus there we go mm-hmm. um, that there's I just feel like when you get over thirty two mm-hmm. you're like ancient and it's like you know so it's that thirty two to forty five age group. Where it's kind of you just kind of lost in the sauce. You're kind of too old to go to the club, but you're not, you too, you're still young enough that you don't want to be just sitting at home. Mm-hmm. And then when you get over 45, child, you just, if they see you even think you're walking to a club, you, they like, what your old ass doing in here? <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of your old ass, that's one of the things, because I have a lot of younger friends, right? Why? Because you're a lot. No, no, I have a lot of older friends too. Oh, okay, gotcha. One of them is going to be joining us later. But I have a lot of older friends and a lot of younger friends. But one of the first things that they say, like when, you know, how you get to read, you know, saying little slick shit to Mm -hmm. each other. The first thing is, oh, you old. Like, that's the first thing that they say. Mm -hmm. And I I have embraced my age. I'm 44. And, like, I have this thing on my Instagram where I put hashtag he's 44. Mm -hmm. When I was 43, I, I started doing that. And for me, it wasn't really about me making this great statement to say, oh, I know I look great for my age. It it was really about trying to remove the stigma from the community for people who feel some sort of way about being over 30. Even when you think about the the dating apps or the hookup apps, Mm -hmm. anything over 28, 29, people tend to lie about their age or you'll see it on their- I just take my eyes off. Well, I'm not on those anymore. But you know, anymore. <laughs> Girl, you just got off. Don't try it now. <laughs> but, Girl, but you just got a man. Now, now she acting like she a damn relationship counselor. <laughs> yeah, y'all love that. <laughs> but but you know, but even in like the profiles, when mm-hmm. you read some people's profiles, they'll say if you're over 28 or 29, you know, don't hit me up. So I wanted to have this conversation because. For me, it's it's almost like we wanted to have this we wanted to have this conversation. Know, you know, Craig like to make everything about him, but yes, no, we no, have this it's okay. But go ahead, finish up. But we wanted to have this conversation. <laughs> but the reason that I wanted to have this conversation is because, from my perspective, and this is not to offend anybody, a lot of black men, regardless of sexuality, because this is not just limited to LGBTQ, but also black men, period, in general suffer from what is called the Peter Pan syndrome. Mm -hmm. This fear of wanting to grow up, not wanting to grow up, Mm -hmm. and this fear of participating in behaviors that keep you youthful and keep you young. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to have this conversation because again, when my young friends or whenever people say, call themselves trying to read, it's like, oh, you're old. And and I'm like, well, girl, do you plan on dying at 27, 29? (laughs) Do you plan on leaving the earth? Because if you you plan on staying here, you're gonna get the 44 too. Right. So, so with that being said, we mm-hmm. put together an amazing panel of, of beautiful people Absolutely. Um, that want to have this conversation because once again, people from the outside looking in, people think that we in the LGBTQ life, well, not lifestyle. Yeah, don't think I'm, that. That's what I'm saying. I, was about to pull you I, got, together. I got it. I was just, okay, go ahead. Yeah, Craig, give me a second. But they think that we live this fairy tale life. We don't have any of these type of issues. They think that we just we're just young, gay, and fabulous all our lives. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like you know, we could we get older, mm-hmm. and we and we go through those type of um, 
conversations, those right. feelings, those things, <laughs> midlife crisis, those midlife crisis, you know, all those type of things. So we want to have these conversations with people today. Right. And I want to know from those of you that are in here that are going to join the conversation, have you ever had a fear of getting older? I've not had that fear, mm -hmm. but I want to know if you guys have had that fear and did you ever in your life covet your age? Because mm -hmm. what I've noticed is a lot of gay men protect their age or very more secretive about their age than women. Mm -hmm. You know, that's something that women typically do, mm -hmm. stereotypically. But gay men, in my experience, they, they don't want you to know their age and they'll protect their age at mm -hmm. all costs. And, you know, and, I'm and I was we were surprised to get a big a big um, response back from, <laughs> from lesbian women. Yeah. I, I didn't know that was even a problem. I, 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 I didn't know they had, that was a problem for them. And this is why we have these conversations, because we're learning about le the lesbian community, the trans community, because we got uh, a tra some uh, trans people that responded to this, some gay men, some lesbians, yeah. non-binary. This was one of our biggest um, responses. responses that we got. Yeah. So, so thank you guys for emailing. So how we... As you guys see, I'm here with Craig today. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna let Craig do this on his own. If you was here two weeks ago, Craig was a hot mess, and I just I couldn't produce him from afar. So, but this, but this is why, for those of you that are <laughs> participating, <laughs> participating in the panel, this is why I pulled him together when we came, when I came through the door. But that's how it was. Right, so, bam. Okay, so how where where, where we want to start at? Um, I mean, do you want to go down the line? Yeah, let's just go down the line. Okay, so we are going to pop up Tracy Lynn. Bam, there we go. Hey, Tracy. Hi, hey, Tracy. How are you? Oh, I'm beautiful. I'm great. How are you? So, thank you for even, because like I said, we didn't even know that this was an issue in y'all community. Mm -hmm. For me, um, I don't have an issue. I've never hit my age. I'm very mm -hmm. proud. I, I love it when I'm around a certain group of people at a certain age and they're talking about old people. Then I check them. <laughs> so, I, I embrace my age. Um, as a matter of fact, can ask what your age is? Um, this coming Sunday, July the nineteenth, I will be the double nickels. Oh, oh. happy fifty fifth! Okay. Happy birthday! Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and um, so I, you know, I've traveled around the world and I've met so many people. And again, like I say, I don't walk around telling my age, but you know, sometimes the age comes up. And I will agree with you guys, both the men and 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 the women. You know, younger when they reach the age of 35, oh, they're old, especially if they work in certain industries. Oh, I got to change my career. And I'm listening to this. I just went back to graduate school and graduated with a master's degree just five right. years, four years ago. And so for me, I embrace growing older, getting wiser. So I'm on this panel. I'm going to be the one that's, I'm all for getting older and I, I welcome it. Okay. Now, what now? You're you're all for getting older now in your in your community. Like I know, I go to speak from a gay man perspective, mm -hmm. okay. but we just know that it is a very harsh thing on us for getting older. So, do you guys get age shamed, and um, or do you feel like when you when do you feel like you're when you get in certain spaces, they look at you crazy, like, well, what is she doing here? Or do you have those type of situations for you? Um, at first, I rented rooms where people would get the looks, but then. You know, and then again, I don't like I'm a I'm a house set. I'm from Newark, New Jersey. I love dancing. So mm -hmm. from my age group, my not childhood friends, all of us, we still out there dancing when we can. So mm -hmm. it's a little different. I you know, like I said, I'm from New Jersey. I'm from Newark, New Jersey, Brick City. So, um, but I know when I've gone over to the West Coast, California, there's a whole different um, idea. So people do, and and matter of fact, the younger people are very aggressive today because they <laughs> say, oh, I like older people. You know, but I'm like, girl, girl, I'm your mama's age. <laughs> so for me, um, I think the younger generation, they're a little bit, some of them, they're very, um, they embrace it, then they don't, but they're very aggressive as well. They definitely like those, those of us that are seasoned. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, just speaking, of, speaking of dating, so now what, what is your, what, what are you, are you in a relationship? I am very single. <laughs> okay, and then what is so? What are, do you date? Younger, older, same age? I have I have dated younger and I have dated older. So mm -hmm. for me, in this in my time right now, I'm just looking for someone that's mature, mentally, spiritually healthy, and um, have a, a zest for life. Um, mm -hmm. But there is a certain I won't date too much younger, you know, than me. I won't, but I do. I have friends who are. In relationships, and they're like twenty years apart. 
and age difference. Mm. Oh, wow. So for me, I, you know, one thing about me, I'm attracted to intelligence and that's what I meet, intelligent oh. women, you know? Yes. So. Now, are you, are you, where are you at? You're in Jersey. I'm in New Jersey, yes. I'm in New Jersey, you from, you, okay. I'm from North New Jersey, yes. All right. Well, thank you, Tracy, for that, girl. You got, you got me feeling good to become 55, child. You oh, know, Rob Craig, old ass, and he be making me feel like, I'm like, I don't want to get old, but you talking to you. Yeah, I listen, win. listen, both my grandparents and great grandparents lived to be over 100. So mm. I asked God for my health because I come from good stock. So I'm going to be here for a minute. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. We're going to drop you now and we're going to bring you back up again. Okay, babe? Okay, huh? <laughs> Hello, Kevin. I'll oh, take Kevin, a Yeah, I'm mute. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Hey, it's Kevin. Fantastic to see you both. I'm, <laughs> I'm in awe because I'm a fan of both your content platforms. Thank you. Here you go, here you go, Craig. Oh, <laughs> he, he was like, if you weren't gonna do it, he was gonna do it. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> so it was a pleasure. So Kevin, have you ever had a, a, a period in your life, maybe in your twenties or your thirties, where you feared getting older? You know, I think I'm on the same page as Tracy Lynn. I have always embraced my age, and I looked at my uh, aging process as the educational process for my life. Because, you know, my 20s, I was wild. My 30s, I was settled. 40s, I was focused. And now in my 50s, and I'm here to tell you, life gets better at 50. It's exciting. I mean, because you really know yourself. And yes. I think that's the blessing. And one of the things that I've said for a long time is like your 20s, you're, you're, you're living outside of yourself. You're reaching and grabbing and trying to make things happen, trying to pull things to you, whether it's career, education. Your 30s are about getting things on track and your 40s really are about things getting, really starting to manifest. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, and I, I guess uh, if I had to say anything about the aging process, it's in the black community, black gay community, not, and I, I wanna be careful, because it's not the black community in general, because aging is a sense of being revered. Because mm -hmm. I noticed of late, I seem to attract a lot of 30 something year olds. And of course, yes, yeah, some of them are looking for the daddy, but <laughs> many of them I'm finding in this millennial generation, there's so many that are so smart and they're innovative and they like to bounce their ideas off of someone who equally has had professional experience, education, you know, down the list. And mm -hmm. so it's a great engagement. Now, would I date a 30 year old? Probably not, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's fun to have that type of engagement. Right. Now, how, now how old are you, Kevin? I just turned 59. Oh wow! You, oh, you well into your fifty. You about to be yeah. sixty. <laughs> oh, Derek! <laughs> He's just, now, look. now the man said he just turned fifty-nine. And you, and you, you actually turned sixty. <laughs> but you know what? Age to me is just a number because yeah. you know I look at myself in the mirror. Yeah, I got a little uh, salt and pepper in the beard, which I love. But it's all good because a, I'm here. B, you know, I'm very focused on who I am. And I think once you reach that uh, self-awareness, you generally attract those who are like-minded. Mm -hmm. And so it's never been an issue to me. I think I have those moments which you all can uh, relate to with people who are your peers. I got friends of mine who are my age trying to run around with 20 year olds. And to me, that looks as silly as you know <laughs> as you can imagine, because they have that issue with their age, mm -hmm. and you know it's just you know it's just foolishness to me. Um, just embrace yourself, be yourself, and everything is all good. And just as an FYI, I have my phone here, but these are my notes, so I'm okay. not a text message <laughs> because we got, some, we got some feedback one time before so I was trying to let me have it, thinking I was reading messages. So my question for you, Kevin, is yeah. that. So what I have, what I have learned, well, I'm, I'm 38. And so in that, in that realm in your thirties, it's really hard finding your place. 
Um, mm -hmm. It's not like, like, did you, did you, were you still finding where you were at? Like, when did you know who Kevin was? Like, at what age you was like, you know what? I can stand in who I am, and this is where I'm going to be, and I'm fine with being that person. Yeah, that's an excellent question because I would probably say for me, it was at 35, actually. Mm -hmm. 35 was the, the age where, you know, I had gone through college and graduate school, was in my profession, mm -hmm. and I was secure and I had a path of where I wanted to go. And so, you know, 35 was it for me. And everything, uh, was smooth until I think I reached 45, 48, that zone. Then I felt uh, trapped into the perception of others because I was with my peers who were aging as well and had a hard time with it. And so I thought, well, what's going on here? And, and at the time I was living in Los Angeles, which we know everything out in L LA is, is as fake as you can <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, it was so many of those factors. And then when I moved back home to the Midwest, because I'm currently in Michigan, which is where I was born and raised. Well, I well, got, where are you in Michigan? I live in Lansing. I'm, I'm from Toledo, Ohio. So I'm oh, a Midwest boy too. Fantastic. So, yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> well, we share the same values. Yes. And so, you know, it's just been a, it just never have been a issue for me. Because again, I think I was blessed with a family support system that, you know, when I came out and I came out actually to my family when I was 30. Mm -hmm. And and so, you know, that was a, a, a major experience. And, you know, I didn't know which way it was going to go, but it went to my uh, favor because my family looked at who I was and not what I was and loved me ever since. And so I think with that foundation, I didn't have insecurities about, you know, my age, my looks or anything like that, because, you know, that's your problem, not mine. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes. Well, thank you, Kevin. We're going to drop you down and bring you okay. back. And thank next you. we have Leah. Hi, Leah. Take your mute off. Mute off. Y'all can all unmute yourselves now. <laughs> While while Leah is doing it, I wanted to piggyback on something Kevin said. Uh -huh. um, Thirty five was when that shift happened happened for me too. It was mm -hmm. like I was really firm, and one of my good friends told me that thirty five was going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. He said because you're you're more you're clearer about who you are. You're less of a people pleaser because I think we all have that to some degree, some more than others. Mm -hmm. And he said once you get to thirty five, you're not really going to care as much. But I remember when I turned thirty, when I was about to turn thirty, or when I had just turned thirty, I had a friend whose birthday is exactly six months after mine. Mm -hmm. And I remember around that time when people would say, so how old are you, Craig? Before I could even say my age, he would say, oh, Craig started. Like, and, I, and I said to him, I said, I said to him one day privately, I said, are you struggling with about, you know, getting ready to turn 30? And he said, yes, I really am. I'm having a difficult time. But I knew that was the case because he was always so ready to let everybody know that I was older than, than he was. Mm -hmm. mm. But go ahead, Leah. Hey, Leah, how are you, baby? I'm good. Um, I just wanted to say first, thank you uh, both for um, allowing me to be on your platform. And it's a blessing and an honor. Well, no, thank thank you, you for, for being, being here. here. Thank you. But um, so can you do you mind sharing your age with us? Not at all. I am 53 years old. OK. Um, from Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, um, just like. Tracy said, I come from a good stock. Um, my great grandmother lived to be 107. Um, my grandmother, who is still alive, um, she actually just fell and fractured mm -hmm. her pelvis. She mm -hmm. is out of the hospital, at home, doing well. My mom is here, who is 80, um, is taking care of her. She's about to go back to Texas. Wait, your mom um, is 80 years old, taking care of your grandmother? Who is 100. Wow. wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You come from some good stock, honey. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so talk to us about your aging process. Um, how was that for you? Um, and have you ever been age shamed? Oh, definitely. Well, one of the major things for me uh, as a black trans woman mm -hmm. is that I never thought about the aging process. Because for me, 
I never expected to live to see this age. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because let me just drop a little fact in here because most trans women uh, die. We, or are in, we are in an epidemic. The average age for a black trans woman is 28 to 30 years old. 28 oh, to 30, wow. okay. I didn't so know with me, um, in my process of growing up and experiencing life, I never had an older trans woman to look up to. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I didn't see those examples of uh, black trans women in the workplace. You know, on occasion you would see one of the girls behind the makeup counter and that's where, you know, most of my career was spent mm -hmm. as a makeup artist, you know, behind the makeup counters in the major department stores. But, um, you know, my, my visibility is so important to the black trans community because I want to say, hey, look, I'm 53, I have a great career, um, I'm thriving, um, and this is something that you can aspire to be. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. vis my visibility is very important. No, yes it is. So going, so your situation is so layered. Um, know. You know, there's so many, it's so oh, many yeah. Maybe I girl, I come back and talk to you on my own. Look, I was just sitting, <laughs> I was just sitting here thinking. I don't know if you're aware, but we did a panel with trans men and trans women, and, okay. did, and I was just sitting here thinking, like, God, I wish you could have been yeah, on that panel. Yeah. But it was, yeah, but it's, yeah, you have so many layers to this conversation because not only, not only are you that you were aging, you're you're aging, <laughs> um, but you're aging as a trans woman. So mm -hmm. that is, so it's so many, just. Mm -hmm. layers to that, that I don't even know where to start. Well, because, you know, here's for me, and maybe you have the answer for this. I've always wondered with respect to trans women who start to transition at 18 or 20 or whatever the age is, do you ever think about, quote unquote, maintaining or whatever by the time you're 50 or 60? Do you think about the long term part of that? I know you said you never really thought about it because trans women don't typically, the average lifespan, right. we didn't have a demonstration of an older trans woman, but did you ever think about, I don't know, uh, being an older person? Well, not until the development of my career in the beauty industry, you know, being around all those people who work mm -hmm. in skincare, who work in makeup, you know, and I'm also a performer. So I've been a performer for 30 plus years. Mm -hmm. So, um, and when you when you do drag and you perform, you know the way that you look um, is kind of connected to so how you earn a living, how you get paid. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you look good, you continually get the bookings. You know. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 just like being an actress. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's about upkeep. Mm -hmm. Because even in that aspect, when you think about like uh, drag performances and things like that, it typically it, it does cater to younger girls mm -hmm. and. Because I, I can't really think. Well, I guess there are there are older performers, but like to your point, like once you start to age, like can you really be doing all that flipping and you know how a lot of them get? Because that's really where the money comes in when the girls can do the splits and they can do the flips and you know unless you're one of those ones that's just really see, revered. When you're a seasoned girl and yeah. you know what you're doing, yeah, you can stand in one spot, yes, because yeah. I, yeah. I know y'all know Raquel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can stand in one spot. And you can command the room. So it's all about what you bring to the stage. Right. Now, did you ever go through a did you ever go through a point of not wanting to get older? Um I would probably say in my 20s, mm -hmm. I did because um a lot of my existence is heavily based in layers of trauma, mm -hmm. you know, from my childhood and mm -hmm. you know being sexually mm -hmm. assaulted and some other stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, there was a time, but I mean, you know, when you grow older, each day for me is a new journey of self-discovery. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's, be it's beautiful to learn something mm -hmm. every day, whether it's something very small or, or a life lesson, it's beautiful to learn. Mm -hmm. So how did you get over that obstacle of fretting getting older? Like, because I know you're saying you, you, you can appreciate and you have gratitude now, but how did you get to the point where you could see the, the blessings and the small things and getting older and the wisdom that comes? Like, how did you get to that? I kind of draw that from, you know, from the maternal figures in my family. Mm -hmm. You know, seeing my mom and my grandmother, 
you know, my, my great grandmother lived on her own until she was, she didn't go to the hospital until she was 99 for the very first time in her life. She mm. didn't go to the hospital until she was 99. So those types of examples let me know, you know, that's the kind of woman that I'm going to be. Mm -hmm. and I started my transition when I was 17. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Oh, Leah, we're we, we definitely coming back to you, girl. <laughs> I got to wrap my mind around a lot of things so I can have my, because I have to talk things out to get my words right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but Leah, thank you so much. We'll be right back with you, okay, darling? Okay. <laughs> All right, Cherokee. Cherokee and, so listen, they got honey, when I popped them up, I said, Y'all got the full setup. They got this <laughs> little razzle dazzle. Yo, they like, what's up? We here. <laughs> I'm just at home. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to put our background to shame. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing real good. How are y'all? Pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Now, well, how can we how old are y'all? Because y'all y'all look younger. I'm 39. Yeah, I'll be 40 August 7th. Okay, and then well, I can't ask. I, I can't ask. I'm, old I'm, you I'm 35. Oh, I'm 35 and 39. <laughs> so, 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 is Cherokee? Are you the one in the tank? The tank top? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, do you kind of have issues with sharing your age? Um, see, the thing is, one, I was bamboozled. I didn't know this was going to be an ageism <laughs> topic. Thank you, brother. Um, so <laughs> I personally don't think I have a problem. Um, I think he, you kind of do. They took a drink on that. They took well, a drink a, on that, so they already know what it is. <laughs> yeah, that was a pregnant pause when I asked you your age. <laughs> um, no, it's just that as um, one of the panelists already said, I don't really see age. So, like, I don't feel the need to display my age or say my age. I'm just, like, I'm out here living. So, but when you were actually, like, talking about the Peter Pan syndrome, I was like, oh, shit. That, that's that might be me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, well, I was so, that, I was talking with you, Cherokee. At 35, I'm closer to your age than Craig is, so I remember. Oh, girl. So I, can remember <laughs> I can remember. I'm closer to you guys. I can remember back then. I remember um, 35. <laughs> do you do you feel this place? Meaning, like, when you want to, like, I still like to go to the club, but when you go to the club, you're like, why am I here? You're like, you know, like, I'm not supposed to be with you. Yeah. Do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do feel that way. That's why I don't do the clubs anymore. Mm -hmm. But I do like to think that I'm in this great medium where I can date up and then i can also date below as well mm -hmm. so it's like i have that happy medium but like going to places like that i feel out of place yeah mm -hmm. now shamar as far but you are you comfortable with your, are you comfortable in your age of being 39 um, oh, yeah. okay I embrace it. you said you said what you embrace I, said it. I embrace it okay now how now do you have that in that this place i just feel like this that middle age mm -hmm. it's like that age of 30 34 mm -hmm. to 45 is it's like we have no space really it's like you're too old to go to the club but if yeah. you're really too old, where y'all from charlotte north carolina so y'all been to atlanta so y'all know oh, yeah always so, like you're kind of too old to be at the club but you're also too young to go to mix because and listen to house <laughs> music you know so it's like <laughs> so it's like you're not so you don't have no real place to really kind of be at so like what do you do in life you stay your ass home who wants to do that? Who, exactly. Who do that? <laughs> but no, I think I think that when you're at in that middle ground, mm -hmm. what, which is what I'll call it, I think that's when you you do more traveling with yeah. with your friends with means. Because when you're in your twenties, you don't typically have the money to do stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, when you're in your thirties, you ain't got no you ain't got friends that ain't got no money to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but then, but then I, I think you also do like dinner gatherings and yeah. gatherings with people at the house, and and it's not to say that you can't go to the club. Because I know, I mean, I just grew out of the club when I was, when I was approaching 30, mm -hmm. I was getting to that point where I really didn't want to go to the club as much anymore. It doesn't mean that I didn't still go from time to time, but it just wasn't my thing anymore. But for me, I noticed when I was going to the club and even if, like now, mm -hmm. going back to the whole Peter Pan syndrome, it really kind of fascinates me when guys that are like well into their 40s or mm -hmm. 50s. And they're at the club and they're trying to dress like they're 19 and 20. 
yeah. Like with the with the with the throwback jerseys and the, and the, and, and the real colorful <laughs> fancy sneakers and the pants hanging down. And you like, uh, what's going on? You really don't think these kids think you're that age. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think you're fooling anybody. So for me, it's just I just sometimes feel like for, for us, for it, with, with respect to black gay men, sometimes it's almost like we get stuck mm-hmm. in a cycle and we don't evolve fully through certain you know, certain mm-hmm. areas in the community, whether it's the club scene, mm-hmm. the ball scene, the sex party scene for those. Oh. People. Yeah, I just right. feel like there, <laughs> there are spaces that some get locked away in mm-hmm. and they don't fully evolve through that. So Shamar, so you said that you're comfortable in your in your age. So when did you when did you find that comfortableness? Yeah. Uh, so answering that question that y'all originally posed of were you ever scared to age or yeah. get older? Yeah. So I would say probably in my early 20s, uh, the first question I asked was, well, when I get old, who going to wipe my ass? You know, being gay, I have no kids. You know, that's that was what the fear was. It wasn't, you know, going through the journey of life. It was who going to look after me, you know? Mm-hmm. But I think as we continue to progress, you know, you have legalized marriage now, you have opportunities or alternatives for having children, sur- surrogacy, adoption, what have you. I'm like, OK, I'm OK. Somebody going to look after me. I take care- good care of my nephews, too. So hopefully one of them will look out for me one day. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and, see, and to that point, Shamar, that's one of the reasons why I've always struggled with why as black gay men, we don't prioritize relationships more than what it feels like we do. To me, because who gonna be there for you when you get old? <laughs> you, know, well, you, know, you know, so know what I'm saying. So I made for me my retirement plan. You guys is that I'm buying a farm, and I'm just gonna have all of my. We're gonna like friends because we all gonna probably be single. No, I'm, I'm not. Like, I'm not. I'm not claiming that. You probably will be. <laughs> we just, just live together, and then as, as your ass, and we'll take care of each other. As your ass die off, we just move somebody else in. Yeah. Oh, we can, we can, that, 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 that sounds like a sad place to be. <laughs> I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I'm not even coming to visit down there. <laughs> I'll be there. I'll be there, Derek. <laughs> you get Cherokee. You understand that? But yeah, life. I got it. I got we're it. Be, we're gonna all be old, fly people, honey. Well, as listen. we get younger, as we get old. Older. Right, Cherokee's name. That I, put them on the list. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you, it's gonna be a fun retirement home. And as I say, we just gonna take care of each other. The golden girl. Take care of each other more. We just move you right along. <laughs> okay. So, so, are you scared of getting older, uh, Cherokee? No, I mean, I believe I'm Asian gracefully. I just, I think my hangup is that I think that when it comes with age, mm-hmm. there's expectations. Mm-hmm. There's things that I think our society push on her, like on us, like you got to have this at this age, this at this age. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm like, well, you don't need to know my age because I'm just <laughs> living life. <laughs> and, and I think that that is part of the reason why people covet their age, because they feel like they, we start to grade ourselves in comparison to other people mm-hmm. and feel like, well, if I don't have this degree or that degree or this amount of money or this home or this car, I don't really want to acknowledge my age because I haven't really acquired all of the things that I think that or that society says I should have at this point. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, so, they, uh, oh, go ahead. Jim Shamar. Real quick, I just want to add this. This is my little brother, and he said I bamboozled him. But the reason why is because he was dating his boyfriend. What are you doing? Yeah, he <laughs> go, go on and tell us. <laughs> <us charity. laughs> Now, I'm going to exaggerate and say it was probably two years, but it probably was like a year. And I'm the one that had to tell him how old he was. Oh. Oh, you Wait, had you, to, you, you date somebody for a whole year and they know your age? What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so let me rewind. So going back to what I originally asked you was, you do have an issue with telling no, your age. No, come on. No, it's just that if you ask, like, if you're like Cherokee, aren't you 30? And I'm like, yeah. Well, I'm, like, oh, I'm, I'm 30 plus, but yeah. Okay, wait. So, how old was the boy? Not being real, though. Man, the man. Oh, the man. Oh, excuse oh, me. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Correct me. <laughs> 28. The boy. Okay. Oh, the man. The man. <laughs> If he's old enough to sit at the table, he's old enough to eat. So he's a man. No, sweet. You know, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of. It's a lot of. Um, it's a lot of. It's a lot of boys acting like men. So, well, you know. but 
and that's not limited to age because I know. Thank you. That's any age. Forty. Well, that's why. But that's why I treat them a day older because I try to date older. And they was full of shit, so I was like, I might as well date me something young and fine, honey, with a nice body. That could be full of shit. They date some old ass man full of shit. <laughs> All of them are full of shit. <laughs> we mm -hmm. gonna, we about to drop y'all down. We're going to bring y'all back right. up, okay? Thank you, guys. <laughs> I can't wait to get to, the, to, to some of these young folk down here on this bottom row. We, we, coming, saying, we, come, we coming down here. I've been saying, listen to me. If I'm going to date you, uh-huh. Cause I tried to date older. I was like, you know what? Well, who was older for you? Well, for me, I was thirty three. He was forty four. Okay. You know, so I was like, okay, I'm on day older. Let me see what this is all about. And I was like, oh, you're full of games and shit too. I might, I might as well keep playing with these kids over here. See, that's that Peter Pan syndrome. Let's talk to John, please. Okay. John Jordan. <laughs> you? How are you doing? Hit your. Um, oh, there oh, we, we go. go. There we go. I'm good. Okay. Good. How are you? I am doing great, and I turned 50 in May, so happy birthday. Thank you very much. Go ahead. So have you experienced, like, ageism or where you felt like people judge you based on your age or you were excluded from things? Um, I think the biggest thing I've experienced is people having expectations of what a certain age is. Mm -hmm. uh, like I was uh, talking to somebody younger, a younger guy, and at the time I was 48, and his comment was like, oh, you're so full of energy. And I was, oh, 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 he was 33. Oh, okay. He was 33, and I was like, well, what am I supposed to be? You know, <laughs> I'm, 48, I'm 48, and I'm not 78. You know, so, um, so I've experienced that, or People thinking once you get to a certain age, you're not supposed to have aspirations or uh, things you want to accomplish in life still. I still have things that I want to do now at 50. I still want to do things that I didn't do at 30, you know? So, um, and I always give examples. Colonel Sanders didn't start KFC until he was 65. That was his retirement job. Mm. You know, Martha Stewart didn't become who she is until she, she was 57. She had a whole career as a stockbroker. And then she became this lifestyle person. So that point of view, Warren Buffett didn't make his first investment until he was 50. He had worked a regular job. So it's a lot of, uh, I think, expectations or ideas about what a certain age is, mm -hmm. which I don't buy into. I, I feel like I always have. And physically, uh, mentally, I definitely feel better. I'm better in every way, actually, financially, spiritually, everything. Now, did you go to a did you go through a point where you didn't want to get older? No, uh, because I think I'm like Leah was. I came out as a gay person like the beginning of 1989, so I came out at the first wave of the AIDS epidemic. At 18, I did not think I would live past 30. Mm. So, so every year for me past 30 has been great because I I mean that was my expectation at 18 years old. I didn't think I would live. Past 30 years old. Because uh, when I came out, AIDS was a death sentence. People usually lived a year or two. They were dead. And um, I just thought at that time, that was my fate. You know, and uh, so no. No, I've never feared getting older. And definitely now at 50, I do not fear getting older. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, John. We're going to bring you back up and do a roundabout in a second. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Ty. <laughs> hey. Oh, <laughs> how are you? I'm good. How are y'all? We are well, thank you. Now, how old are you, Ty? I am 34. Oh, I'll be 35. I want to know why you looked over to the side before you answered that. <laughs> I caught it. I caught it. You know, you just want to catch stuff. But I am 34. I will be 35 at the end of the year. Okay. okay. And how do you feel about aging? Have you ever feared getting older? Do you fret getting older? Um, have you felt displaced, if you will, from the community because you're over 30? <laughs> I, will, <laughs> I will say, um, kind of piggybacking off of um, what the gentleman said earlier, mm -hmm. one of my things when I was younger, and getting old, it's not that I feared it, 
but it was one of those, dang, you know, I'm gay. When I get older, who's going to take care of me? Am I going to be alone? That's what I associated with the fear of getting old. Mm -hmm. Um, I can say within the last few years, Mm -hmm. I've done better with that because I can, I can honestly say I'm in a space now where I'm okay with saying, oh, I'm about to be 35. Mm -hmm. And I know to other people that's considered old. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with being old. So that's why I stand now, but it took a while for me to get here. But it'd be crazy that you consider 35 to be old. (laughs) That's foolish to me. (laughs) That's foolish to me. And and, you know- But that's what it is. And and interestingly enough, I had this conversation, I think it may have been when we were putting together these topics, I had this conversation with my mom and she said, and I, and I I was talking about, you know, the fear of getting older. And she said, well, do you have that fear? And I said, no, I don't have that fear. I've never had that fear. But I said, even if I'm single and I'm older, I just, I've always had that kind of personality that draws people to me. So even if I'm, if I'm not in a a room, I'm trying to say something that might help somebody else. What I'm saying is, even if I'm not, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> once again, y'all. If I'm y'all not, wait, stop, just stop. Once again, y'all. If y'all, y'all have always turns it on him. <laughs> and how we all talk about Craig all the damn time? It always end up about Craig. How Craig is amazing. No, no. Craig, is, <laughs> Craig has degrees. No, 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 no. Craig no. writes books. That's not what I'm saying. Craig, I, I don't care about getting older because I attract people to me. So no, I don't no, no. Feel like, okay, okay that, that, that's not but how. Ahead, that's not that's how what, I meant right, that. But go ahead. But no, what, what I'm saying is, I've never feared growing old alone because 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 you're gonna always have a man. Like no, no, no. <laughs> like many of you who can relate to what I'm saying, you have that kind of personality where you draw people to you. So even if you don't have a romantic relationship, you'll have great friendships. Guy. Around oh, you. okay. That's what you was going to get in that. <laughs> but you will be surprised that sometimes, even outside of relationships, you deal with, you have issues within friendships with the age, too. Because it's not easy, you know, going out and hanging out with younger crowds. We have to hang out with our age group to feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. We should feel comfortable going anywhere mm-hmm. and just enjoying one another despite the ages but mm-hmm. so now for you now, for you do you feel do you get go to places that feel this place sometimes do you have people in your your friend circle that um that call you old or um what's the word is it what's the word which what, would you ask her uh, you get age shamed uh-huh yeah do you have do you have any of those issues I don't have many friends because I don't like people that much. But the few people that I do fool with, um, some every now and then they crack the joke because I am older than them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it doesn't bother me. Um, I can say now I'm okay with going out and not feeling some type of way. But I did stop going to pubs and bars because I was like, how am I going to fit in? Mm-hmm. But it took me being confident within myself to say, I don't care if I don't fit in with them mm-hmm. because I'm not really here for them. Mm-hmm. I'm here to have a good time for myself. So, so I you, think uh, I'm listening. No, go ahead. No. So you think what? I think oftentimes when we think about the whole age issue, we tie that in with our own insecurities in a sense, mm-hmm. because sometimes it's not what other people think or they aren't really worried about our age, but we're so caught up in our own head. Like, man, I'm about to be 30, I'm about to be 35, and I'm not where I want to be. And we put ourselves in these boxes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes we do it because that is the norm. That's what is expected, you know? Mm -hmm. Now, you say you don't really too much care for people, so you either must be a Scorpio or a Capricorn. I am a Capricorn. (laughs) I figured. Okay. Only, only fool with a few. Right. You just circle small. <laughs> I'm going to drop you down, Ty. We'll bring you right back up, okay? All right. <laughs> Craig, so we got two more people left. Yes. Now, I want to challenge you uh-huh. to not make either one of their conversations about you. Well, they're younger than me, so I'm sure I've lived through something. I know, but can you just try? I'll do my best. Please. Okay. Okay. Hey, Kyle. <laughs> hey, y'all. Hey, Kyle. How are you? Yes. Oh, here we go. How are you? How are you? 
Good. Now you look real young, kind of. How old are you? Twenty five. Twenty six. I, I I can come to the majors. Well, because you like them young. That's why. Then see, now let, let me clarify that. <laughs> The people always say, especially the people that watch my lives, they always say that I like people, guys that are young. That's not true. They gravitate to me. But what happens is when and I you, was, and you collect them. When I was 26, no, I don't. When I was 26, I dated older. Like I dated guys that were like nine, 10, 11 years older than me. But again, now that I'm the, the older guy, it's almost like the guys that are my age. Then when I try, I asked him not to make this about him. But well, you, <laughs> you open up, you open well, that up. I didn't open it up, but anyway. But go ahead, Kyle. Kyle so twenty six. So now you, you are still, you are considered still the prime of yes. your, your, in your gay life. So mm-hmm. what? How do you fit into this conversation, Kyle? I so my experience with my relationships, um, as they relate to kind of platonic friendships, but also romantic relationships, I've always been around people that were older. Um, even when I was in grade school, I kind of always was welcomed by the the upperclassmen. Um, one of my best friends is in her 30s. Um, I have a friend who's in her 40s. So I've always kind of been around and surrounded by people who are older, um, just because ironically, I've always found their conversations just to be a little, have a little bit more uh, depth. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I just I just resonated with with them more. I, I also have been told I have an old soul. Um, I'm not your stereotypical twenty something year old. I'm a homebody. I'd rather go to a kickback rather than like a club or something like that. Um, so I, you know, in that regard, I I don't fear getting older at all. Um, I've never feared getting older. Um, I, I look forward to it because I just feel like there's just so much left for me to experience and that could enrich my life that I like, what's the point of, it's inevitable. You're gonna get older. I, we all should hope we would get older rather than be, you know, taken out of here early. But yeah, I have no I have no quarrels with it. So now, so as far as dating, so do you, you date older? Yes. Uh, well, How much it? older? Look, um. Craig ain't single, so I don't no, know. No, I'm not single, so I'm not asking for oh, me. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna make just, sure. No, it's fine. I'm not single either, so it's all good. Okay. <laughs> but I I um it kind of just depends. I would I don't think I would date someone who is like 20 years older than me. So you're 26. How old is the guy that you're dating now? He just turned 38. Oh, okay. Oh. That's 10 years old. <laughs> Let's see. So now, do you find so how how is that for you? Do y'all do you find that y'all have things in common? Do y'all do y'all ha, are you, do y'all have a good um, conversational relationship? Um, do you feel do you do you have daddy issues or anything? I I did dealt with them in counseling, so now I don't. Okay. Let's see. And that was a good question, girl. We need to have a therapist here to be asking questions like well, that. Well, no, that's a good question. He went to therapy, so he knows. I mean, it was a good question, but I mean, <laughs> neither one of us are certified. <laughs> and ironically, with the with the daddy issues, it actually had nothing to do with my romantic relationships. It had more to do with my friendships and how I how I do friend how I do friendship. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm very invested, uh, very present, very involved, and mm-hmm. everyone wasn't that way. And after going through counseling, I realized that I kind of had this expectation that people would at some point leave. Um, and so I kind of was just waiting for that to happen. And when people, I'm very open, and I, I feel like I give people that disclaimer, like, if there's ever an issue, you can talk to me. I'm open book, but mm-hmm. people just kind of like to phase themselves out of your life for whatever reason. And I found that to be difficult to understand and having gone to counseling and all that stuff, I realized that it had to do with that stuff, but. So you, you're you saying you had some sort of like abandonment issue because you had a fear that people would leave? Um, yes, and, and not just leave, but leave without um, an explanation. explanation. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. So we're gonna, but thank you for giving that little insight. We want because we want like you know to have somebody that's twenty six. You know, we we didn't know where you're gonna fall in in this mm-hmm. conversation because you know like because a lot of people like we, we was going through in this moment you fit into the categories of youthfulness mm-hmm. and um and being in, in the, your prime in your prime and in your space. Um, but. You gave us some good insight on that, I remember, mm-hmm. and I appreciate you for being here. I do have one more question for you. Mm-hmm. So since you typically date older, have you ever felt 
ageism in the reverse way where older guys are like, oh, you're too young. Like, you know, I, I can't relate to you mm -hmm. or your mentality is going to be too young. And because I'll be honest with you, there's a point where I didn't want to date too young because mm -hmm. there are things that I think that you that, that enrich your life as a young gay person, like when you're in your 20s. Mm -hmm. Like you should be going to the clubs. You should be going to your gay pride events and doing all of those things, all those mm -hmm. things that we got the chance to do. But at 44, I'm not interested in someone that wants to still do all of that kind of stuff. Not because I would ever tell you, no, you can't do that. Because I think that, I don't think that love is ownership or control. I think mm -hmm. love is freedom with clear boundaries for the relationship. But I just think that, that you know, being able to do all of that is kind of like a rites of passage. Mm -hmm. And so I would prefer to be with someone who either doesn't want to do those things or they've evolved past that already. Mm -hmm. So have you had that kind of reverse kind of thing where older guys have felt like you're too young or you're not established or whatever? Yeah, I've, I've had a, when I was dating, I did have a few um, experiences where either conversations will kind of end at, well, how, how old are you? And well, I don't know it, how this is going to work and things of that nature. But ultimately, I think at, at, at the end of the day, I think it does come down to who you are as a person at your core. Like, What are your values? What do you see for yourself in the future, regardless of where you are in the future or the, the state of your life? Mm -hmm. um, you know, wh what are the things that you want to work towards, goals that you have, you know, your passions and all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I think that has a lot more stock in how enriching a relationship between two people can be. Um, rather than just the age, because as you know, a few of people have said who've spoken before me, um, I think also Derek, you mentioned this, you were like, there are a lot of boys uh, trying to act like men, but also men mm -hmm. who are acting like boys. So it kind of, you just, it really is down to the individual because sometimes you'll meet a, a, a somebody who's in their forties or fifties or what, what have you, trying to, you know, fulfill some kind of unfulfilled, you know, moment in their life where they're acting either my age or younger. And, you know, the reason I don't date my age is because I just don't find that I have as much in common. It's just the conversation is just different and the energy and the vibe is just different. And so I think mm -hmm. just older people, both friendships and ro romantic uh, relationships, I just resonate more with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, okay. Thank you, Kyle. We'll bring you back up for our roundup. I'm um, in a second. We got one more person left. Um, oh, let me make sure to charge her. Do your, do your thing, Craig. <laughs> All right, Kyle, we're going to drop you down and we're going to bring, is it Tiara? We're going to bring Tiara in. Hi, Tiara. Hi, you actually said my name right, because usually people get that confused 30 different ways other than my name. <laughs> right. Well, thank you for being on here. <clears throat> You're welcome. And so what were some of your, what are some of your experiences with um, ages. I do remember your email. I don't remember all of the details, but I do remember getting your email. I'm unique because I don't look like my age. So it's a little bit harder and difficult for me to date. I'm 34, but most people think that I'm about like 18, 19 and that, right. oh, I'm still flourishing and that I'm super young and I'm still trying to find myself and I'm doing this lesbian experience. You know, because everybody's experimenting nowadays and it's you know, it, it's harder for me to date because I feel like I don't fit with the older and I don't fit with the younger. And to, mm -hmm. to what I attract is women that are looking for someone my age that brings stability to them. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. because, because when I think about that, and again, again it's about vantage point, I often think about young boys. Somebody mentioned this earlier about daddy's daddy issues. Um, oftentimes, young boys go after older guys that can that are more established and can take care of them because sometimes these young guys are still in college or they're still living with their parents, but they have this older boyfriend who has money to go to dinner, who has money to, to you know to travel to pay a cell phone bill or whatever. Um, and then in the reverse, we have a lot of older guys who date younger guys because they can have that control, if you will. They can kind of wear the pants in the relationship. They can kind of be the dominant one. And sometimes it's an ego thing because they still, they, they, they feel like they um, still got it mm -hmm. you know, by dating a younger guy. So it's interesting to hear your perspective on that. It, it's the same thing, well, being masculine and being a stud. Usually most studs have a control issue with um, being with a woman. So they usually want the woman to stay at home 
and they are the financier and they are the person that pays the bills. And if she has children, they take care of the kid because nine times out of 10, she has someone that is not um, co-parenting her with her the best way. So usually I kind of, I, I've dated, now when I was 22, I was dating somebody that was 35. Mm-hmm. So, and her kid, her oldest child was 18. And as I, we started progressing in our relationship and I was gonna marry her and this is one of the midlife crises when you're young things. You think you're so quick and you're ready for the marriage and the being in the relationship though. But then when you realize and you look back to, at it, at 22 to her 35, I wasn't mature enough for that. She uh-huh. had three kids. She was a ready, ready family, was a whole nine yards. So I've dated, and then my last relationship, she was 28. She wanted to go out and have fun and party. I'm an old head. I act like an old man. I like to just go to the you know cigar bar and chill, smoke my cigars, hang out, relax, talk to the old older guys that are married and disgruntled and don't want to be around their wives. And just, you know, learn that way and talking to older people. I'm not into the club and the gay scene and all that. I never have. It's just, mm-hmm. it, it's not for me. Mm-hmm. So that have you, so do you feel displaced um, and, not, and not really knowing where you, where you belong at mm-hmm. and, and what space you really kind of belong in? Sometimes I do. And then sometimes I don't because at the same time, I'm securing who I am. So regardless of whether I am in a relationship or not in a relationship, I'm cool. If I, if, you know, I had an aunt that lived to, she was 93. She never was married. She never had children, anything. I'm okay with dying alone, but I'm at peace. Mm-hmm. And that's well, the main thing. I mean, I mean, I mean, I, and the th- the, you know what, that's so, <laughs> like that, that hit me real. Yeah, like, you heard me go. I was like, that hit me a little bit. <laughs> but I mean, but I mean, but that is a reality. Um, that some may have to come to terms with, um, you know. I mean, I, it, but as you know, it's just hard hearing it come out people's mouths sometimes. It's like, oh shit, oh, I might have to die alone. Jesus, okay. <laughs> and, I think, I, and I think that's because you know they all have the same dynamic. You know, relationships, especially with lesbians, it, it might last a week, thirty days, two mm-hmm. weeks. You know, everybody takes it so fast. Mm-hmm. You know, one minute you meet them at the club, next minute they have moved in. Mm-hmm. And you're in this full relationship. And so you never get a chance to really experience yourself. I think a lot of people don't really get to ex- experience themselves. I think that's why I'm so comfortable. Plus, I went to therapy. So a lot of people don't really find themselves. You know, they look for love to appear and for it to, you know, heal black those people. people need to go to therapy. Go to therapy, black people. <laughs> but, but you know, one thing that I wanted to to to, to say there, where you said, you know, le- especially lesbians, they move in quickly. I always try to reject stereotypes like that because that's not just lesbians. It's, I mean, it's gay. You know, gay, gay men, men do too. it. Straight gay folk men. do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so, like, and, and like a lot of times, I'll hear gay men say, "Well, if I was straight, I would be in a relationship right now. Straight relationships aren't as difficult." And I'm like, "Well, who?" Who are your friends? <laughs> you must not have any straight friends. You know what I mean? Like you must not have an equal balance of straight and gay friends because the waters over there are just as trouble. Mm-hmm. What, well, Tierra? Thank you for your insight. We're gonna bring you back up for a roundup, um, but thank you. You're welcome. So all of my older, um, my all of my older panelists, Kevin, like Tracy, Tracy, Kevin, Leah. Leah um, John, John, a, yeah. Uh-huh. So you guys heard all the all these younger people talk. Mm-hmm. You heard their conversations. So we want to hear from you. We want to hear thoughts from you and, and that advice. Mm-hmm. Um, and, that, and, and anything that may have triggered you while you were listening to the group, others. So yeah. if there's anything else that you want to say, do you want to bring them, those four on? Well, we bring them all four. Well, bring these right three. Okay. Yeah. John, we're going to bring you in after because there was a little connection problem when we heard you earlier. So we'll bring you in separate. So Tracy, Lee, and Kevin, y'all, y'all heard, y'all heard all these wonderful conversations, <laughs> and um, and these and their insights um, on why they feel the way they feel, getting older, be, being young, and not saying their age, things of that nature. So Tracy, I want to start with you. What kind of what advice would you just give anybody in that space of not wanting to get older and, and being afraid of not having what they're supposed to have at a certain age and things of that nature? 
I would say that um, things take time. And first of all, you have to be comfortable in your skin. And for me, I, I'm not a follower, I'm a leader. So I think that um, whatever you put out, you attract. So if, if, you, if there's some period people out there that's, you know, afraid to tell their age, they really need to embrace their life and look forward to the future. And the second thing is that um, I think you should have self-love and self-confidence, number one. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm going to go back to saying that whatever we put out in the universe, it comes back to us. So <laughs> like Kyle, I was very impressed with Kyle because he yeah. said that he is attracted to older because he learned. And I think that it's got to be a balanced thing, you know, when it's two people. So it's energy. Um, it's, it's what you're looking for, you know. So I just think that um, the young lady, the, the last young lady who spoke, you know, she said some things. I'm glad that Craig kind of corrected me <laughs> because that's a no-no because that's not true. <laughs> but, uh, but other than that, uh, like Kevin, um, Leah, we all said that, you know, it's, it's really what we come from. I think that makes a big difference where we come from. So whatever you want to be and how you want to live, you know, be that person. And again, you will attract who you are and what you want. Mm -hmm. Kevin? Yeah, I mean, I'm already in love with Terry Lynn. It's consistent <laughs> exactly what I feel. I'm Tracy Lynn. Tracy <laughs> Lynn. Oh, but my apologies. That's my okay, apologies. sir. That's okay. I think uh, one of the things that I, I would impress upon, as you say, the younger panel, is, <laughs> is that we are all teachers, meaning that all of us can teach someone what to do or what not to do. And when you come into engagements with people, no matter what their age, your goal should be A, to get to know them. And that's where we fail many times in the gay community. And I love Tierra who, who just spoke because I've been a, in that zone of getting into relationships without getting to fully know and understand that other person. Mm -hmm. And that's the one warning I would tell everybody, get to know someone before you start making that long-term commitment. And then also, you know, it's just like the old analogy, like wine. We get better with age. Yeah. I mean, at, at my age of 59, I have experienced all the changes that we've all seen on the books from techno techno te technology related changes, changes in government, gone through the AIDS crisis, and now we are going through the Black Lives Movement uh, period. And so, you know, we all have value. We all have worth. You just need to be open to be able to extract that. Um, so that's what I would say. Thank you, Kevin. Leah? Well, I can say that, um, you know, it's important to, uh, to tell the younger folk that uh, when you're discovering who you are, uh, it's important before you give your love to somebody else, it's important to learn to love yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you can't uh, wholeheartedly give yourself to someone if there is a piece of, if, if you're not whole within yourself. Um, I embrace my age. Um, I look forward to getting older, whether it's with someone else or by myself. I know that I'm going to have a fabulous time um, as I have on this, again, on this journey through self-discovery. Mm -hmm. um, and the irony of this conversation is that we are now in the age of entanglement. <laughs> <laughs> and we are in this age of entanglement. And, and you would really be surprised at how many young guys um i'm i'm only attracted to older men you know mm -hmm. because um that's just me that's just what i prefer you know but um i get a lot of older uh younger guys who who try to come at me but it's just it's not my thing and, and it never has been but um yeah it's important to just <clears throat> have a strong connection with your creator um mm -hmm. learn to love yourself before you give yourself to somebody else now, all you guys, all you guys has said this, have the same thought process about loving yourself. Yeah. So I know, Kevin, you said at 35, you were true to yourself. But 
can I ask all of you guys, when did you, because learning how to love yourself is a whole nother different situation. And and people say that, but they don't really tell you so how. how. Yeah, or, what does or, that really mean? Or, or how long does it take? Uh -huh. Or where does it come to? Because people, because I think a lot of people beat themselves up. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm one of those people. I'm still, at 38, I'm still going through the process of loving who I am as a person. But nobody, no. but you beat yourself up because it's like, I'm going to love myself at 20. I'm going to love myself at 30. Like, why am I not, why? Am I going through a process of learning how to love myself when I, this just be something that innately is supposed to happen? You're you're supposed to love yourself. So my question for you all for you three is when did when would you say if you put an age on it where you can say that you can wholeheartedly say you know what I love the person that I am. So Tracy, for me, I would say when I was I was thirty because mm -hmm. um, I grew up in the church. Um, my family, you know, I didn't understand. Who I was, I always liked girls since I was a little girl, you know. Mm -hmm. And all the little boys I liked when I was growing up, they were they were pretty boys and end up growing up to be gay. So for <laughs> me, I, I would say um, when I turned thirty. And matter of fact, may, yeah, just before thirty, because I was dating someone older, and mm -hmm. she said, "You better tell your family who you are, because I'm not coming around acting like I'm your friend." And she was about ten years older than me, mm -hmm. so I thank her for that because she helped me out myself to my family. Most of them knew anyway, but I also went to therapy, you know, because um, I, you know, I always want to do things perfectly. So I would say around 30 is when I knew, you know, like embrace myself, forget it. And then my, my dad, he was like, fuck what people think, you know, be who you are. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, but I never wanted to do anything to disrespect family because mm -hmm. that was very important to me. So I would say around 30 um, years old. Mm -hmm. Kevin, for you, if you could put an age on when you learn how to love yourself and say you wholeheartedly love who Kevin is, what, what would that age be around for you? Yeah, I can, I can actually tell you uh, emphatically, it was when I was 40. And at 40 is when I started traveling. And I remember going through the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And it gave me the sense of being with Black people who were proud to be Black people. And it made me realize how much in America we are up against so much that tells you you should not like yourself. Mm -hmm. You should not like being a black woman with natural hair. You should not be a black man who can walk tall, be professional and enter the executive suite. Mm -hmm. And so when I realized that, that you see the bounty globally of black people who are doing the, doing the thing, moving mountains. And that's when I started saying, hey, that seat is, in within, is within me. Mm -hmm. And so from that point forward, nothing in mainstream media has ever you know, tipped me because it's not about me. I'm about me. And I don't let that dictate my style, my preference, the people who I'm, a, I'm around. Now saying that, it sounds easy, but it was a process. Mm -hmm. and so again, when I when if I had to give 20, 30 year olds, even 40 year olds advice, it's again to look within and realize that particularly, and I'm I'm just gonna speak from the black perspective. Mm -hmm. We are from people who survived. Mm -hmm. And so when you recognize that you think about why do we do the things that we're doing today? How can we be killing each other? How can we be going through this constant chastising within our own community, whether you're trans, whether you're a lesbian, whether you're an older gay man, all that is irre irrelevant. And so I think people need to start and stop and think. And, and, and I guess, and I'll, I'll close with this, is that this COVID experience, in self-quarantine made me really evaluate my needs versus my wants, mm. my strengths versus my weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And you know, the four months of being, you know, locked up in my house working from home really had me thinking. And now I'm crystal clear. I'm crystal clear on the Black Lives Movement mm -hmm. of how the black gay community needs to have a strong role in that, and we do. But it's, it's ironic because the black community has always been the nemesis to many of us. 
because of the staunch religious uh, you know, norms in our community. So I'm hoping we'll be able to bridge that gap. Um, so I'm excited for where I think we're moving as a people and as a country, but we all have to get there and we have to get there through self evaluation and self rejuvenation. So, you know, it's an exciting time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and just to add to what you said, and then we're gonna come to you, Leah. Okay. This whole idea of like self love, I think most people confuse that with going to get your hair done or going to get your nails done. Or no, no. Mm -hmm. That's not loving yourself. That's pampering right. yourself. Mm -hmm. Those are, there's a distinction between those things. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's care. That's self care. Mm -hmm. And I think loving yourself comes with what something that Kevin said is when you travel, if you can travel by yourself and it doesn't even have to be that broad, something right. as simple as going to the movies alone. Like mm -hmm. you have to discover what you going to eat by yourself. There are a lot of people that can't go to the movies or go to eat by themselves. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean go to eat to like a fast food place. I mean mm -hmm. a sit down place with a cloth napkin, go to a hotel bar, sit at the bar, have a drink by yourself. Like that, that's how you get to know yourself and understand yourself. But yeah. go ahead, Lee. For you, if you go with an age or one, you could say you wholeheartedly love who you were. What, what age would that be for you? I would probably have to say uh, well into my 40s. Um, I spent most of my 20s and my 30s being clinically depressed. Mm -hmm. um, I have attempted suicide before uh, in my 20s. Um, but it was not until, because I've lived all over the country. You know, I've lived in all the major cities um, by myself. Um, and discovered a lot about myself on the way. But um, I kind of mentioned this before in, in, uh, in some of the comments in one of your other uh, podcasts that um, I kind of walked around in life wearing this coat mm. of, um, I had on what I call this, uh, a coat of trauma. Mm -hmm. And I walked through life with this heavy coat on and only until I saw the threads on the coat unraveling. Girl, you better you know, speak with these metaphors. And I was, then I was able to, to see, you know, the true me. But I see that now at 53 years old, I have an obligation to black trans women to, sh to be visible. Yeah. You know, it's, it's very, very important now when black trans women are being slaughtered mm -hmm. at record numbers, you know, it's important um, for me to to say that I am alive and our lives matter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and so not until my 40s, um, that's when I started to really, really love myself. Mm. So somebody had asked earlier in the comments, why is it that black trans women are uh, their lifespan? What, what did you say the age bracket was? Uh, 28 to 30. And it's because black trans women are being killed. So hopefully that answers the question. I saw that question floating through yeah. there. But Tracy Lynn, Leah, Kevin, thank you guys so much. Like, it, like, and for me, this has been a great conversation for me because, like I said, I put a lot of pressure on myself. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I've I've lived a lot of my twenties uh, up to to, maybe to my thirties on television with a whole other pressure on me of not aging and figuring out and not having what I'm supposed to have and doing what I'm supposed to do and learning how to love yourself and still trying to work it through that process. So to hear it's like, hey, it's okay. Take your time. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, we all are going through that process. Mm -hmm. So I want to appreciate y'all from my heart. Thank you because this conversation has helped me. Mm -hmm. oh, Craig, I want to connect with you because I'm working on my memoir. Okay. And <laughs> yes, please. Yeah. Please. Um, you can email me through the same um, email. I'll get it. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Really good. And to uh, Leah's point, also, it's important for LGBTQ people, period, to be visible. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. and that's, the only, that's the only way that we can affect change. So when you are in the closet, because a lot of times gay men, black gay men, will say, well, "Why is it important to come out? It's important to come out because you need to be seen. Mm -hmm. The time is now. You need to be visible." Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you, Leah. Thank you. Thank you. We'll bring John up. They were really good. Yes. There we go. Both. John. Yeah. Can you? So, can you, so, so, 
So, same question for you. When, when, when did you, if you put an age on it, when did you say you said love yourself? I would definitely say everything came together for me at 40. Okay. Um, it was just my life experience in my 20s and 30s, and it all kind of culminated at 40, and something happened, and I felt so solid and together, like 39 turning 40 was it for me. Mm-hmm. And I and if you could, if you get some advice to our younger panelists, what would that be? Um, as far as goals that you have, don't tie it to a certain age. As long as you have goals that you're working toward, you have your plan of how to achieve the goal. Don't tie it to achieving it at a certain age. Um, I did that and fell to pieces when I turned 30 because I hadn't achieved all this stuff that I wanted to do by 30. I would say just always continuously work towards your goal and it will happen when it, when it will happen. If I could go back and talk to my younger self, I would say, please relax. It's all going to be okay. You're going to get where you're going, <laughs> you know, and it may not be in your timetable, but you will get there. So I would definitely say relax. Um, other thing, take care of your body mm. and your mind, your health in general while you are still a young person. I would say for me, from my own personal experience, how your body ages is kind of dictated of how you treat your body when you're younger. Yes. I, like now at 50, I don't you know, have uh, any major health issues. And I think that's because along the way, I did eat right most of the time. I still work out three days a week. Um, and I go to therapy you know, when I need to, to love myself. And it's an ongoing process. I mean, loving yourself is not a destination to me. It's an ongoing process, a continuous process. So I would say those things I would uh, say to younger people. Also, for me, I am out and openly gay at 50, primarily now for younger black gay men to show that you can live your life and do everything you need to do just like a heterosexual person can do. You can get to be middle-aged, elderly, and all of that. It's, you're not limited because you're an out black gay person. So those things, um, those things have really helped me. And like I said, I, um, as far as aging, my life at 50 is the best it has ever been. It's the best it's ever been. Thank you so much, John. Thank you for being part of this conversation. Thank you, John. So bring, so bring all these whippersnappers we're, up We're here. bringing the youngins we're in. We're bringing all the youngins in. <laughs> Any final words, young folks? <laughs> Cherokee, are you okay? You feel, are you, do, do you feel, do you feel at peace with your age? <laughs> I'm getting a lot of wisdom. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, what, so, what, so Nick, I want to ask you guys the same question because, because we're here, we're here where they came to it as far as loving yourself. So, Ty, do you love yourself or are you learning how you love yourself? And if you are at a point of loving yourself, when did that happen? I'm in the process of loving myself. Um, I think based off all of the conversations, a lot tied into therapy. Mm -hmm. I started going to therapy about three years ago. And so around that 31, 32 age, I was really struggling. But I think um, therapy allowed me to get to know myself and heal. And so from that, I'm in the process of loving myself. Mm -hmm. Cherokee, what about you? Are you are you are you loving yourself in the process of loving yourself? Or where where are you at in that space? Yeah, no, I absolutely love myself. And um, I would say in my late 20s -hmm. is when I realized that and I would like my grandparents really helped me out with like self-esteem and accepting who I am um, because I was dealing, I was really struggling with being gay when I was younger. So um, my grandma's really loved up on me and mm. just like, you know, God made no mistakes. So that really helped me out with my esteem. And I, I found it early in my twenties. Mm-hmm. Shamar, how about you? Uh, I think that when I hit 30, so I had a relationship that ended. Uh, well, I ended it at 30. And somebody told me that, you know, when you become 30 to 32, something in your brain just clicks 
And for me, it was like yeah. four months after I hit 30 and it just shifted. I left that relationship. I did that whole self exp- exploration. Mm-hmm. So I started focusing on my health. I was going to the movies by myself. I was going to dinner. And then I've been to four countries by myself in the past, you know, uh, eight years. So I felt like I was doing a lot of self-love, healing myself and working on myself. And it took my brother to tell me that um, I needed to do a little bit more work. You know, him being the younger one, I'm thinking I know everything. He told me to do a little bit more in the sense of being visible because Mm -hmm. representation is important. Now, I'm not a closeted person by any means, but there's just not anything that I really talk about when it comes to my sexuality. So the same thing with what our climate is right now, to be silent is to be on the side of the oppressor. So the same thing with the LGBT community. For me, never you know, opening up and sharing and actually saying the words, I'm gay or I like, you know, whatever is me being on that side. So give that visibility because you never know. It could be somebody out there watching right now that can appreciate this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. Oh, thank you. You But but see, to your point, Shamar, that that's where that self-reflection comes when you're able to do things like travel by yourself. And you may not be have the finances to be able to do that, but it doesn't have to be that broad. Again, it could be going to dinner by yourself, going to the movies by yourself, just being able to spend because you'll find yourself with yourself. Mm -hmm. That's the only way you get to it. If you're always around other people, you Mm -hmm. never really spend enough time to really get to know you. Mm -hmm. That's right. Tier, how about you? Are you in the, are you loving yourself? The process of loving yourself? Um, How's that that, that for you? Um, I can say it. um, 31, 32, the, the bell went off in my brain. And I got tired. I got tired mm-hmm. of being broken. I got tired of going from relationship to relationship. I got tired of the monotony of life. Mm-hmm. And I had to sit back. I went to therapy. I started loving myself. I healed a lot of broken things within myself. And that's why I said, I think I'm cool. I'm, I, I'm not stressed out about being in quarantine by myself. I've been working from home since March. And I actually enjoy being by myself. I'd rather be by myself than actually be with someone that I'm not happy with. Mm-hmm. And I think I've, I've learned to be content with me. I can go to movies by myself. I can go eat by myself. I can go chill by myself. I can come home. And I know ain't nobody yelling at me or getting on my damn nerves. So <laughs> for me, for me, I'm okay. And I've told plenty of women, I yeah, would I like to have a girlfriend? Would I like to have a, a, a partner, a wife? Yeah, but I don't need it. Mm. Kyle, how about you, the youngest one of the bunch? Are you? <laughs> where is your process with, with loving yourself right now? I, I, right now, I have a I have an appreciation for the value that I can add to different things. Um, mm. I don't. I was very much a people pleaser and uh, just trying to fit in. Mm-hmm. Um, I grew up as an only child, so it's interesting to hear the experiences and um, the backgrounds of other people who are having a hard time being to themselves, you know, without, mm-hmm. you know, ex- the external stimuli of other people and other personalities. It's like, well, who are you when all of the, 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 the noise has kind of been quieted and you're just left with your thoughts and your emotion and there's no there's no distractions there. Um, I've never had that problem. I have no problem entertaining myself. I don't. I don't need someone to be around. Of course, it's nice to have other people there just to compliment you and you know your energy and the dialogue. Mm-hmm. But um, when it comes to loving myself, I don't. I don't think that's going to be, you know, a destination. It's just kind of a marathon. Um, and, you know, and with each phase of life, depending on the experiences that you have, the traumas you may experience, that can definitely change your perspective about what you are and aren't willing to put up with, um, what you are and what you aren't looking for, um, the things that that did and no longer resonate with you. So I think we're just we're just so we're too complex of a of a of a of a race to to just kind of be boiled down to, well yeah, I have, I have it all figured out. You know, I'm good. You know, this is this is it. You know, I think there's just so much more um, to us than we've even we're even aware of and we've even tapped into. So I'm I'm, I've learned to change my perspective. 
um, and change how I perceive things because you could easily become overwhelmed and full of anxiety and where you're like, I have no idea who, who I am and I'm this age or I have no idea what I want to be and I'm this age because mm -hmm. so much of our life is already planned out for us, whether it's by our parents, whether it's by society, whether it's by you know our friends or our <laughs> um, own community that okay, you're going to go to school, then go to college, then you're going to get married and have kids and all that. Well, that's all fine and dandy if that's what you actually genuinely want to do. But until you actually explore who you are and what you actually enjoy, you're going to just find yourself in a, in a monotonous kind of uh, mundane and somewhat boring day-to-day -day life that you didn't even really sign up for and didn't know that you would subscribe to, but you just wake up one day and you realize, what have I done with my life? Who am I? You know, and then before you know it, as, as people say, it's it's too late. You know, you're kind of either at that age, whatever that age is, and you, you, you're you kind of out of time, you know? And so there's only so much you can do. So the earlier that I can love myself and the faster that I can love myself, I think the more that I open myself up to being uh, taught and, and cultured and experienced things. So. Okay. I want to thank all you guys for being a part of this conversation. Um, I appreciate you, Cherokee. Thank you. Even though you got me to <laughs> I appreciate you being here. Um, and thank you guys. And yeah, we appreciate you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you guys for watching. Everybody that's, that's watching. So, um, so we'll take them, we'll bring them down. Oh, let, let me let me bring you all down. I produce you, sweetie. I produce you. <laughs> you act like you don't know how to work this. <laughs> bring everybody down. There we go. Now we're here. All right, so now we're here. Uh, listen, we really appreciate you guys participating in these conversations again. Yeah. It really is about sending vibrations into the universe, and mm -hmm. hopefully, it will trigger conversations in your circles, mm -hmm. uh, in your friendships, in your family. And I and and I personally have learned so much today. I mean. And I guess I need to listen to your old self, you know, tap into that wisdom, some of that seasoning. Speaking of that wisdom and seasoning, <laughs> uh, Brian Jones wants to gift my first book to somebody on the panel, one panel. So if there are any panelists in here that don't have my first book, um, can you, you guys can see me. Is there somebody yeah. down there that would like the first book and I'll send it to you. I just need your um, shipping address. So just drop your shipping address in the private yeah, chat. Yeah, drop your shipping address in the private chat and I'll and I'll send it to you. Um, but thank you for that, Brian. But our next conversation. Which one? I don't I don't know. You have over there. Oh, I'm ready. I know you're ready. What's I'm the, ready for what's, this. What's, what's the next Y'all ready for this next conversation? What's I don't think y'all ready for this next conversation. What is it? This next conversation is gonna be on July 29th. That's two weeks from today. And oh, it is bottom shaming. Oh yeah. Bottom Gosh. shaming. <laughs> now that's for that's that's for the that's for the gay community. For the gay, for the, for the, now, for now the women, gay community. Yeah, now women, you're welcome to look. <laughs> well, no, I should say that's for the, the that's for the gay and the trans community. Right. Uh, let me correct myself. But anyway, it's bottom shaming. So if you'd like to participate in that conversation, well, wait, well, we well, what is bottom shaming, Craig? Well, you tell them you would know better than I do. <laughs> I don't make fun of people, you know, for their <laughs> sexual position. Because I, I, I believe that, listen, I enjoy gay sex. Right. Oh, okay. You, you understand what I'm saying? When you were talking about you in a partnership, I mean, because I, I, really, I really do think. Get off my phone. It shouldn't be going on while we're sitting here talking. <laughs> I really do think that part of the reason that black gay men struggle with longevity in relationships mm -hmm. is because oftentimes we get caught up in sexual roles. Mm hmm so this conversation is about bottom shaming. So if you identify as a bottom or um, if you identify as a top and you shame folk that want to be a bottom. Yeah, you look down on folk that are that that play or if you top role. that want to be bottom, that want a bottom and don't really know have and it's a lot of right. Or if you're it's above, a lot of shaming. If you're above a certain height, because you know the gays will say you're too tall to be a bottom. Oh, you too a man. You too manly to be a bottom. You're too manly. So yeah. we want to hear from you guys. The uh, here's the email address. It's scrolling across the bottom. If you want to participate in that conversation, it is glmconvo at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. We would love for you to be visible, but you can also participate and not show your face on the camera if yeah, if you don't want if you don't want to show your face. I mean, we would like to see seen. you, but now, people, once again, I say this every week, and we're gonna say it again. Send <laughs> <laughs> um, send a short email. 
Sure. <laughs> About how you can answer this conversation. Three to five sentences. <laughs> Because I'm the one reading these emails. Greg reads them. I don't read them. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> uh, so that send a picture and send your contact information. So we just know who we're talking to. Your, your contact um, information being your phone number. Your too. phone number. Because if you email us, we already know your email address. We just need your phone number because... So, we have somebody reach out to you and everything. Exactly. And stuff. But yes, yeah, so I'm excited about this too. Me too. Because I, I mean, you know what? I, and you know what? This, this may be... Well, when this came up, we had a conversation. This may be a reason why I don't have sex. Because Derek is asexual. I'm not asexual. Well, what are you? I just haven't had sex. That's that's a difference. I'm not asexual. I know what I like. You told me that you think you're asexual. No, I didn't say that. You said you told me you thought I was asexual. Oh. But what? Craig. I'm just... Okay, Stop. so Der Derek has never had he's never had intercourse. intercourse. He, he's done things that people got mad with me because I yeah. said that he sucked dick. Well, well, but what, what, but, but you, Derek said well, that. Why would you keep saying it? All because I need day. you. I need you to stand in your truth. You want these people to stand in their truth. I need you to stand in your truth. I wait, but I, 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 I stand in my truth. Okay, so then tell the people <laughs> <laughs> that you like to suck dick. <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> Listen, July 29th. We got these nice. You got me a big thing. We got these nice. Um, these nice mature on the line. You want to sit here talking all crazy by the mouth? So, Jesus. <laughs> what is the date? July what? July 29th. July 29th. Two weeks from today. Two weeks from today. Email us if you would like to be a part of this conversation about bottom shaming. Yes. Uh, we will come on and do our we'll come on do our announcement and have mm -hmm. our regular conversation we normally do. Yes. But thank you guys for tonight. Uh, we thank our panel. You. We appreciate everyone. Um and share the video share the video like, like the video subscribe subscribe to the channel all that good stuff we hope that this has grown you guys you know we hope that we provoked you to think about something that perhaps you haven't thought about yeah so thank so, you so very much have an amazing night be safe mm -hmm. brush your teeth floss your teeth brush your tongue because nobody want to kiss you if you don't brush your tongue <laughs> bye y'all bye y'all <laughs> <laughs>